This is a Monte Carlo simulation of waiting time in an office. Let's say a doctor's office. So what you need to know first before we are going to simulate this is what are the minutes between arrivals. 5 minutes, 10, 15 or whatever is the case in the office you are dealing with. Then we predict the probability that that happens. And then we do something similar for the, the time of treatment. 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the time that the doctor or the nurse needs with that patient. What is the probability that it's 5 minutes, the probability 10, etc. Then we need cumulative totals here. So we start with 0. Then the next one is, so that is C2 through C2. C2 through C2, those are the probabilities. And then finally here it will be C2 through C3. When you copy that down, it's uh, be locked the first C2. You do that with the key F4 on your keyboard. But the second one is not locked, so it will change into C3 when you copy it down. We do something similar here. So that is done too. So now, based on that information, which is a given, let's say, we are going to do that for 10 customers or as many as you want. I do it only for 10 and then later on I will repeat all of this 1000 times more. So let's start with the first time. What is the next arrival? We are going to use the VLOOKUP function to find, based on a random number between 0 and 1, we are going to find in this range what that would be. And then we find the answer in column 2, that is column B in this case up there, and we do that with a non-exact match. Then we are going to find out the clock time. The clock time is B7 locked with F4 key through B7, and when you copy that down that will be B7 through B8, B7 through B9, etc. I will skip the start for now. That is 10 minutes of course in this case. Then we are going to do the treat time. The treat time is based on E2 through F4. We use the rand function again. It will take a random number between 0 and 1. And it will always find the previous one in an ascending order. Then we know what the finish time is. That is D7, the start time, plus E7, the treat time that the nurse or the doctor needed. So in total, the wait time is F7 minus C7. What we haven't done yet is the start time for the second customer, etc. If C8, that's the clock time, is less than F7, then take F7, otherwise F7 plus the difference between C8 and F7. And we copy that formula down. So those are the results. And each time I press F9, this curve will update. For in this curve, we are dealing with all these values. So F9, F9, and you will see the waiting time varies a lot because there is randomness involved. It's hard to predict. Sometimes you are lucky, sometimes you are not lucky. But what we do know is what is your maximum wait time. And I put that here. The maximum wait time of all these 10 customers was in this case 20, which varies all the time. Okay. And then we are going to repeat all of this 1000 more times. So what did I do? I put in here the max function. And here I just typed max wait and then 1, 2, 3, etc. up to the end. And then here we are going to insert a table. So we highlight the whole range. Start here. Control shift arrow down to go to row 1018 and to the right and we implement a, a data table. Data. What if analysis. Data table. Data table. And we say what is the row input cell nothing, column input set cell anywhere in outside that range, an empty cell, 
and make that OK. And this time when you press F9, it's going to repeat that 1000 times. And based on that formula, which based on these values and those formulas are based on the etc., it's a cascading effect. So each time I press F9, I will get quite some spread, volatility, Monte Carlo, and I plotted that here. So that is basically based on these two columns. And besides, I calculated the average maximum weight for all those thousand cases based on 10 customers each time. That is the average of G18 for G1018. That number will not vary much. The average maximum weight is somewhere in the range of 27. Sometimes it's a little higher, but there will not be much of a spread. Individual cases may spread a lot, as you can see here. These are very steep points in your curve. That is what Monte Carlo simulations can do for you, based on randomness.